Hey everyone, uh, Jace here. I'm going to be doing a breakdown of my most recent character, the Arcane Templar. A pretty cool character based off the wonderful concept by Fino Feng. Uh, be sure to check out his work on our station, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be doing an overview of my character, a uh, small review on hand painted textures and how to really you know push your textures. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm uh, just gonna take a look at this guy. Um, he looks pretty awesome. Really proud of the work I did on him. Um, he is a 1024 texture. Uh, one texture sheet for him. Uh, one texture sheet for the VFX, but that can also just be one texture sheet. And then uh, one texture sheet for the button here. And obviously one for the little platform he's standing on. Uh, yeah, so get through my, my workflow real quick. Um, I pretty much box model everything in Maya. I unwrap in Maya and then I paint in 3D code in Photoshop. I don't tend to sculpt and then bake down textures because you will get a baked look and uh, I think it takes a little bit too much of extra work to get rid of that and achieve that painterly feel. Um, you know if you use your, your baked textures. So I tend to just get in there and start painting. Uh, but speaking of painting, there are two main ways of going about the hand-painted textures that I like. Uh, the first way is just paint in color. Um, this is my preferred way. I feel like you have the most control over the final results, and I also have the most fun painting just in straight color. Uh, that's how I painted this guy. Uh, the second way is to paint in grayscale. Uh, more like ambient occlusion, I guess. Uh, that will give you a better result. Uh, and then apply gradient maps to you know various parts of Photoshop. This gradient map method is a lot better for production. Um, it really allows you to iterate and get different color variations in. Um, but to me, it's just a little weird painting in grayscale. Now uh, the most fun um, painting in color, and then also I think I have more control over my final result that way. Um, but yeah, so here he is. And Marmoset tool bag, that's what I use to render him. Uh, but we can go over here and take a look at Maya. So here at Maya, um, let me turn off that and see his model. Look at his topology. Um, he is about 12k tries, I think. Sorry. He is around 14,000 tries uh, for just him and the weapon is. 780, but there's a uh, in this viewport, there's a little missing piece. Let's run a uh, thousand, thousand tries for the weapon, and then uh, yeah, we're pushing in 15,000 tries. Um, pretty standard poly count, I think, for a hero asset and like WoW or League of Legends or you know, any stylized game. Maybe he's a little over, but for a portfolio piece, I think, I think it's a nice, nice poly count. Um, I used uh, one of my own base meshes, but I think you could use any base mesh, you know, if you wanted to make a character. I have a collection of base meshes that I've, I've made and purchased and found over the years. Um, so yeah, this is just my personal base mesh. Uh, I kind of made it to fit the uh, WoW aesthetic. Um, you know, WoW, WoW proportions, or, you know, Warcraft proportions rather. Uh, so yeah, started with the base mesh, model this guy, a uh, few pieces are like the hood and the helm is just, just that. Um, you know, some intricate pieces here like this, a little wonky. Uh, so yeah, when I model, I pretty much just box model things, you know, put cylinder, cylinder, cylinders in place of the, you know, gauntlets everything over the base mesh um, you know boots I model around the feet and, and such uh, yeah so you know modeling is simple you know you just just box model model all the all the assets uh, that's it <laughs> uh, the real fun is, is texturing but before that you always UV I'll look at this guy's UV sheet There are his UVs. Um, I actually had a few issues with the with the UVs. My the first time I UV'd, 
or unwrapped, my texel density was really bad. Um, so I ended up having to rebake, uh, you know, redo the UVs and rebake for my texture. And I'll actually show you how to do that in 3D Coat later. It's super easy to do in 3D Coat. I know you can do it in Maya, but the 3D Coat method is awesome. Yeah, so unwrap, real, real easy. Um, for those of you that don't know how to unwrap, you will just find a seam. So I'll actually just unwrap this, grab this seam. Well, first I, you know, will grab a set of faces. I come over here to UV, and I'll do camera based. So boom, it pops up here, and I'll do that to everything, and then I will grab, you know, specific parts like this part, and then I'll cut this seam. We're going to cut, and press cut under the UV editor. Um, that is also, I think, Control X, Shift X, but I click through a lot of menus. Uh, then you, you know, go to UV, uh, double click any part of that island, uh, Shift right click and unfold. And unfold and there you go you get your UV and that unwraps perfectly uh, that's the way I UV I know some people UV differently they want like really crisp edges um, but I think that you get the best unwrap this way I want to do all of that you know if I show all my squares that's how it looks for the checkerboard A uh, note, uh, as I was modeling, I got a, you know, I don't want to say a rough block out, but a pretty final block out, and I went straight into painting. Uh, things like the hood weren't quite, weren't quite done. The gauntlets, I think I changed some more. Uh, there were a few pieces missing. Some of the, of the proportions weren't quite, uh, quite there, mainly with the head area. Um, but I really like painting, and I think that, you know, as you as you paint and do paint overs and such you can you can really see you know where your where your model is going and because it's really easy to um bake down uvs you know bake down textures to new uvs and 3d coat i uh i felt comfortable just iterating um you know that way i didn't spend too long modeling and then you know losing a bunch of work and going back you know just rebake rebake those 3ds and it looks nice Um, for those of you wondering, this is not, not PPR, it's all hand-painted. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Uh, yeah, so after you get the model, and you're locking your model, you check the silhouette and stuff, you go ahead and launch up 3D Coat. And here I have an early version of my model. Uh, I'm not going to be painting live, as it took me a long time to paint this guy. But I'll, I'll go through um, different processes and, you know, and say you know, what I was doing and... and and tips on painting and such. So I established my light source was going to come from here. And then, you know, to give a little bit extra on the tabard, you know, it's going to come a little additional light right here. I guess right here. So I don't know if you can hear my cat sprinting in the background. So here's a really early version. As you can tell, the hood is a lot different than the final hood here. Uh, it was a it was a rough block out. Uh, some things that the proportions are still different. He looks really stubby. Um, there's some gems missing in places. Uh, but yeah, so I just kind of got all the colors down. And here's the concept right here. Um, got the colors where I liked them pretty much. Uh, the, all the base colors and such. And from here, you know, you move on and start painting more. But you can tell that I got a few landmarks in here, you know, some, some folds, you know, just a little bit of rendering to make me feel happy about <laughs> my progress and such. Uh, but pretty much everything is just, just base coat. Um, a quick note is whenever I put in the model, I will start with a base. Um, you can tell here that I have a curvature map and ambient occlusion. Um, but I just paint right over that. I don't really... I just have it as an outline so that I know what I'm looking at. 
Um, but when you load in your model and you just have the flat model here with no textures, just layer zero, you can come up here to textures uh, and then calculate occlusion and calculate overture or curvature. Um, and then I put my curvature map above the ambient occlusion, set that to overlay with an opacity at about 50%. And that's going to get you um, a model that looks like this. So, you know, you do have the AO and stuff, and then uh, I have a base coat that I paint in Photoshop or in this. And, yeah. And then I put that on, and then I just kind of get an idea of, of uh, the lighting and you know, shadows and such. It just makes it look nicer pretty much while you're, you know, you're starting the painting process. So we will jump ahead in time some. Okay, so here we are. We've jumped a little bit of ahead in time. Um, pretty much I have have a final pass, you know, or not a final pass, but a, a much more further pass at the center tabard. And I got the folds in there. I, I wasn't too comfortable painting cloth uh, before this, so I went through a few iterations of, of painting the cloth and making it feel feel nice and, and how I liked it. Um, feel satisfied with the final result. Probably could have beefed up the size of these folds a little bit, but looks good. Um, you know, I got uh, got some of the face in here. Uh, I don't think it's too much further besides just this feeling more whole and coherent. Um, Yeah, uh, I will say a quick note though in 3D Code is since this is a hand painted texture, you're gonna want when you load up your model to press two on your keyboard, and that will put you into um, flat flat shading. So no light is being emitted. I think five puts you in. Yeah, so five puts you in in the shaded mode. Whenever, whenever you paint, you'll, you'll paint like extra stuff if you have these enabled. So I go ahead and disable these and just leave the color on and then press 2 on my keyboard and you get, yep, yeah, unlit model. You can tell that a lot of my lighting isn't here yet. Uh, you know, it looks, it looks very, very muddy and dull pretty much because it's just flat color. Uh, and the curvature and ambient occlusion really, really help with that. But as I said before, you know, I just paint over that, those layers entirely, you know, with new layers. Um, actually, I did start getting some of the, uh, the inner of the big, big Dracula collar he has going on here. Got some of that painting in. Yeah, so you see one of my first passes. So we'll go ahead and jump ahead a little further in time now. A lot of up saves. Okay, so here we are. We jumped, you know, quite a bit further. Um, I have some things looking pretty nicely here. Uh, you know, obviously the tabard's looking pretty good. The face is more fleshed out than it was before. And then I have some additional textures here. I've also started blo blocking out the pattern for the gambeson material. You can see here, uh, but as I said before, I do have some uh, stretching issues with my unwrap, but I can take care of that, or I will take care of that later um, in the process. Uh, I will show you 3D Coat's texture baking tool, um, you know, for rebaking new UVs or rebaking your texture to a set of new UVs. It's really easy, really simple, um, and really lets you feel comfortable with changing your model like I, like I do. Uh, you know, changing the hood and stuff. Uh, there's still some changes to be made, you know, like I said, with the hood, with the proportions up here in the neck, uh, and then some gems and additional things, just not quite there yet. Uh, but um, you'll notice that in my uh, texture and in the concept, this Templar has this little emblem here, and it's really easy to get those emblems. So um, you come over here to Stencils, and you press New, and all you have to do is make a stencil. And boom, you have a stencil. Uh, pretty much you just make that in Photoshop, you know, 1024 by 1024 um, canvas size. Uh, 
fill it to all black and then paint with white your your icon or, or decal. Uh, and then you, when you load that in, you can press new. What is happening? All right, so here we are. We've jumped a little bit further ahead once more. And you can see I made quite quite a bit of progress here now. Um, yeah, I'm getting getting some, some more lighting information here on the shoulders, some more material definition going on. Uh, I've also blocked out some of the uh, pattern for the Gambeson material here. Um, still haven't fleshed out quite yet the uh, proportions and funnel model, model for the head, but we are getting there. Uh, you know, getting some information in for the gems and such. Um, yeah, uh, and also go through a few things. Uh, for brushes, I just use these four uh, brushes, mainly these two right here. Um, nothing, nothing fancy here. I don't, I don't even know if you can download brushes for 3D Goat, but I'm sure you can. Uh, but one of the cool things are stencils. And I uh, notice that in my final model and in the concept, uh, there's like this cross looking thing. You can actually just make that in Photoshop uh, and then apply it to a stencil here. And it's really easy. So just make a 1024 by 1024 um, black square in Photoshop. So I'll get a new just like that. Fill it to black. And then with white paint your you know what you want. Your emblem to be. Uh, and then save that as a PNG. And then when you go to 3D Coat, you're going to press New, you get a dialog come up, and you're just going to choose your PNG. Uh, and then right after you choose it, it'll show up here, and then boom, this dialog will come up, or this menu will come up. You get this little bar, move it around, change the zoom to where you want it. And you just fill this in. Just like that. Press close and there is your there's your emblem. That's exactly how I made the emblem. It's super nice. I really, really like this feature. Uh, in 3D coat. Uh, and then it's on its own layer. Uh, there's no real reason to do that besides painting in, aside from that I'm more comfortable, I guess, painting you know, like decals and stuff in Photoshop, probably a little bit faster. Um, also, you can reuse it. So, you know, I have like this and this, and, uh, you know, I can use that multiple times throughout the model if I need to, um, instead of, you know, painting one and, and then going through that. You can also just, you know, apply it onto the 2D texture in Photoshop and just place it where you want it, but sizing and stuff can get a little confusing there. Anyway, yeah, so uh, we're getting there. Um, Gamison is, is there. You see some stretching here. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to end up redoing the UVs and baking down the UVs. Um, but yeah, you know, he's, he's coming along at this stage. So we'll jump a little bit further ahead, ahead again. Okay, so here we are. we've made a substantial upgrade. Um, 
I've gotten the gambus material up here. You know, rough paint in. Got a rough paint in also down here, but they don't match in size, and some of that is because of the UV. Some of that is also just me not doing a very good job at staying uh staying the same on these textures. Uh you also notice that I upgraded the model. So, you know, the, the hood is been substantially updated and we're getting the final proportions in. Quite a bit of the texture is starting to take place here with the gym. Um, still missing some parts. Got a block out of the, I guess, whatever material this is. And yeah, you know, we're, we're getting there. So just paint it on some. You know, so while I'm painting, I'm really trying to, you know, keep my, my values in check and and make certain areas the highlight, such as, as the, the face. Um, as humans, we like to look at faces and look at eyes and such, so I really want to frame this area and have this area be the highlight. So I'm, you know, keeping that in mind as I, as I texture. Uh, you know, down here, it's a lot more flat. The highlights aren't as bright. Maybe there's a little bit, little hints. But a lot of the highlight is is in this area by the by the face uh, so you get most of the contrast here with really bright whites uh, hood and you know the eyes are glowing as, essentially and then they're encased in, in shadow so you get a really nice highlight here And, you know, that, that just kind of goes everywhere. Uh, it's brighter up here than it is down here. Uh, just kind of making sure that this area is, a, you know, draws your eye more than this area. This area. And the concept helps a lot with that as well. So let's go ahead and... Up ahead once more. All right, so we're definitely getting a lot closer to the end here. You can see that my lighting is drastically improved from the start. You know, my my highlights are, are in here. I the light source, you know, seems like it's coming from this direction. It's looking very nice. Uh, just a few, you know, a few small details. I need to add a gym down here, and you know, maybe fix some more lighting elsewhere, and uh, repaint the gambus and material. Uh, so, yeah, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to redo UVs. Um, so here we will have uh, this character that has brand new UVs. him up just a little bit. So he has brand new UVs and we want to get these new UVs onto the old UVs. Uh, essentially you're going to save out this model as um, as you know, in my case, Templar new new UVs, and then I save the old model, you know, or just you know duplicate it in in your Explorer and rename it, you know, Templar old UVs. You're gonna come over here to 3D coat. And you go to textures. So you're gonna want to make sure you have your your old UV model loaded up into 3D coat. Um, so let's assume that this is the old, the old UVs. And you go to textures, you're going to go to the texture baking tool. And you're going to change this to, you're going to get a few dialog options. Change this one, change the first uh, mesh to bake to box to the new UVs. I'm going to press open. And then you change this to the texture you want. In our case, we do 2048. Uh, and then this is going to export the new map. 
So, you know, name this. See, I already named it. Create a new UV. Uh, really easy to do. Then you press OK, and it's done. Then you close out uh, 3D code, load up a new instance of your character, and you can have new UVs. Um, really, really, really simple. Uh, if you have any questions, you can, you know, leave a comment and you can get that answered. You can send me a personal me message if you want, but it's really, really easy, in my opinion, and super powerful. Lets you iterate really effort effort effortlessly, really. Um, so yeah, we'll go on to just the final touches now for the model. Right, so here we are at the end. This is, I think, one of the last saves I had. Um, so you yeah, have the effects in here. Uh, the lighting, you know, it did, did some additional passes, you know, really, really popped the lighting out. And, uh, and the gamma material on the back is pretty much complete. I uh, got some folds in here for the arms. And yeah, so at this point, uh, towards the end, I get kind of a little messy in my workflow. I'll, I'll you know, rig and, and start working on my, you know, render and stuff and, and see how see how he starts looking. Uh, and then going back and forth between Photoshop, 3D Coat, and Marmoset, um, trying to make it look as nice as, as possible. Uh, but yeah, you can see here's the final model with the rig right there. A really, really simple rig, nothing too special about this rig. It moves. Anyway, uh, so I'll go ahead and show you how to render, or how I do the render. Uh, once, once you get a pose, it looks how you want it to look. Um, essentially, it's really easy. I just choose, uh, choose a skylight that I like. Uh, in this case, it was... Well, well I guess for most um, hand painted textures, you won't have lighting. I just, I just did this for the uh, beauty shot, but if you make them unlit... Uh, just choose a background that looks nice. I chose this color, um, you know, for the viewer. Uh, but you know, paint in your own background. And here's a splash image. Put a little paint background here. So yeah, then uh, then you have a nice, complete character. Looks super, super pretty. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope hope you learned some things. Hope uh, my workflow was useful for you guys and the breakdown of my character. If you have any questions, feel free to you know message me on ArtStation or Twitter or email. Um, doesn't really matter. I will try my best to respond to you. Uh, check out. My art station, my portfolio, be sure to check out Fino Fang's art station and portfolio, the concept artist for this piece. And yeah, thanks for watching.